On November 5th, 2005, two workers died at the Valero Energy Corporation refinery in Delaware City, Delaware. They had entered a reactor vessel, a confined space that was filled with nitrogen, an odorless, invisible gas. The accident occurred during a maintenance operation at the 5,000-acre facility, which processes 180,000 barrels of crude oil per day. The complex is one of Valero's 18 U.S. refineries and has 570 employees. From the moment a person first goes in to an oxygen-deprived atmosphere, they are effectively impaired. And when the oxygen-deprived atmosphere begins to enter the lungs, the oxygen in the blood that's going to the brain starts to fall. That affects the brain's judgment, it affects coordination, it affects the ability to exert strength. They fall down, fall unconscious, or their judgment is so impaired that they can't find their way back out, and they die. Valero's hydrocracker reactor number R1 was shut down for maintenance. A large pipe elbow had been removed, creating an opening surrounded by large steel bolts in the middle of the platform. Workers had wrapped red tape around the bolts and covered the opening with plywood and plastic. Nitrogen flowed into the reactor and exited from the covered opening. Nitrogen is invisible, but it is colored light green here for illustration. Workers had attached a sign reading, Danger! Confined space! Do not enter without permit! A crew of Matrix contract workers had received a Valero-issued permit to reinstall the pipe elbow. The safe work permit did not warn the crew that the reactor was filled with nitrogen. In fact, the permit stated, quote, Nitrogen purge in A. Not applicable. Two contract workers removed the plywood cover and cleaned the ledge around the opening. At about that time, a third worker noticed a roll of duct tape lying five feet down inside the reactor. This presented the crew with a problem. The tape would cause the reactor to fail Valero's cleanliness inspection, and they would not be allowed to reinstall the elbow until it was removed. However, entering the reactor to remove the tape would require obtaining a specially trained and equipped crew and a confined space entry permit from Valero. That process would take many hours, and delay the installation of the elbow, which was to be completed before the end of the night shift, now half over. To avoid the long delay, one worker stood near the opening with a long, flexible wire and made several attempts to hook the tape. But he was unsuccessful. What seemed like an easy task just wasn't working. Most likely, the worker then got closer by sitting on the ledge of the opening with his legs dangling inside but he still could not remove the tape. Based on the evidence, the CSB developed two possible scenarios for what happened next. In the first scenario, the worker lowered himself into the reactor to quickly grab the tape, relying on his foreman nearby to insert a ladder so he could climb back out. But after lowering himself into the reactor, he inhaled the nearly pure nitrogen inside. Deprived of oxygen, he quickly collapsed. In the second scenario, the worker on the ledge leaned over the opening trying to get closer to the tape. At that point, he either accidentally slipped into the reactor or he breathed in the oxygen deficient atmosphere just above the opening, lost consciousness, and slid in. What happened next added to the tragedy. An eyewitness saw the foreman and the contract administrator peering into the reactor. The stricken worker was lying unconscious inside. The foreman quickly inserted the ladder into the reactor and climbed down to help his fellow worker. But without a breathing apparatus, he too collapsed from the lack of oxygen. The contract administrator declared an emergency on his radio. Valero operators then sounded the unit alarm. When company emergency responders arrived a short time later, they saw both victims lying motionless inside the reactor. A handheld meter inserted through the opening showed less than 1% oxygen, a lethal atmosphere. Wearing supplied air breathing equipment, the responders entered the reactor. A rescue hoist was used to remove the workers. It was now almost 10 minutes since the first worker had collapsed. Attempts to revive the men were unsuccessful, and both were later pronounced dead at the hospital. This video shows the inside of the Valero reactor where the accident occurred, the roll of tape still visible just five feet below the opening. 
It's a situation where a worker might be tempted to believe he could quickly get in and out to accomplish what appeared to be a simple task. But safety experts warn that would be fatal. Nitrogen gas hazards are not limited to the inside of confined spaces. A person who's leaning over, for example, with their face close to an opening in a, uh, a vessel with nitrogen under pressure is not going to be breathing the regular concentration of oxygen in air. That can impair judgment and it can also cause the person to pass out. Warning signs and barricades are additional protection for workers tempted to enter low oxygen environments. The CSB found that there was a confined space warning sign posted at the opening of the Valero reactor. But it was only after the accident that the company put up a barricade around the work area with a sign reading, Danger, Nitrogen Inert Gas Purge in Progress, Oxygen Deficient Atmosphere, Do Not Pass This Point Without Authorization. When a worker does enter an oxygen deficient confined space and is overcome, it can set the stage for further tragedy as other co-workers attempt rescue without proper breathing and rescue equipment. This can lead to multiple deaths. It's particularly sad because when an incident like this happens and you have a man down, uh, other workers invariably feel a very human urge to rescue the co-worker. So they, they run into the situation very often without getting self-contained breathing apparatus, uh, without getting an air supply, and fall victims themselves. It's not a question of the worker's judgment, it's a question of the worker's training.